Hi, welcome to I Am My Mandala. I'm George Herrick, and I'm absolutely delighted to be a part of the Asylum Hill Congregational Church uh, Creative Arts Retreat uh, once again. Uh, it's always a fun experience for me, and I know today will be for you as well. The, um, the process we're going to do today is something that I learned um, probably years ago, but I practiced a lot over the last couple of years as I've been healing from cancer. One of the things that I know from personal experience and from professional experience is that creative expression is very helpful. Creative self-expression is very helpful in the healing process when we're going through something that is challenging for the body or the mind or the emotions of the spirit, to be able to express what's in here out on paper or the voice or uh, the dance floor, any kind of media of creative self-expression really helps the body and mind and, and emotions and spirit through the process. So I'll say more about that probably as we do this experience. Uh, but first, let me just set the scene here. We're in my studio, the little corner that I set up to, um, to do this work today is kind of cramped. So you're going to see me move kind of funny at times and you're going to hear the squeak of the chair. Um, it's right by a window, as you can see, and so periodically you might hear some noises from outside. Um, I have a cat. The door is closed, but she might paw at it. Um, and I'm telling you all of this because what we're going to do today, although I'm going to try and set it up in sort of a sacred way for you, what we're doing today can be done anywhere, anytime, under any conditions. And, um, and it's always useful. Um, the, um, you know, maybe I'll say a, bit, a little bit about the healing process from the cancer, too, because that, that has a integral role, really, in, in, um, in what I'm doing for you today and, and, and what I did for myself. Um, and so the, the cancer is gone. I'm, I'm healed from the cancer. Uh, we still do some tests. I uh, just did one with my oncologist recently. Um, but I'm, I'm basically healed from the cancer. However, the treatment for the cancer, the side effects, are ongoing and sometimes drive me nuts. I go through hot flashes, and so I have a paper towel handy, which I may um, wipe my brow. Um, you're just going to get me as I am. Uh, that's, that's how I operate as an artist, as a coach, as a human being. We all do that. And, um, and so by allowing ourselves the authenticity to be who we are and how we are and create from that core place inside of ourselves where we're just us and there's no pretense and no shoulds and no right or wrong or good or bad. It's just real. Um, that is the ideal place to create from to help the process of letting what is in here out there. So I share all of that with you simply for that purpose. Um, let's see, uh, in, in further setting up the, um, 
environment, um, I like to make, anytime I'm doing a creative exercise, whether it's in the studio or out in nature or wherever, uh, I like to set up kind of a creative, um, I mean, a spiritual um, scenario. And so anytime we're telling a story, which I think creative expression really is, we're telling a story about our truth and our experience. Anytime we're telling a story, we want to have light to illuminate it. I see that as a spiritual thing. So I don't want to set up a candle in these tight quarters. So I'm, I've got this little, uh, maybe you can see it better against my shirt, this little uh, uh, battery operated candle. And so we'll set up the, uh, the light that way. The easel is going to be the altar. And um, and our materials uh, will be the tools that we do this sacred expression with. Before we begin any of the process, I want to encourage you to notice your environment. The I don't know whether you're going to be working on an easel like I am. I'm, I set this up so that you can see it. Usually I would do this on a table. You may want to do this on a table or an easel or on the wall. You can do it anywhere. And um, so the thing to do is to set it up now um, before we begin. You were given a piece of paper, and I just want you to unfold it and set it up um, Set it up in an easy way. I'm going to use a little bit of tape to hold mine in place. You can do that or not. Actually, I want to have a slight tilt because with the camera angle, it's going to show better if I tilt this slightly. So, and one more down here. So I'm, I'm taping it just so it doesn't move around a lot. You may want it to move around a lot because it's, it's um, as a mandala, it's going to be round. So set up your paper, have your markers handy, um, and um, let me say a little bit about mandalas. Um, mandala means circle, um, and it's a symbol for wholeness in, um, in both Hindu and, and Buddhist culture. Um, I have notes here just to, um, yeah, it represents the universe and it represents the search for wholeness. And the, the way we're going to use it today is to, uh, is to develop a, a holistic image of who we are to use both as a, as a place of grounding, as a place of uh, it becomes almost like, it can become almost like an altar cloth for you, but it's a place of grounding and, um, and it can also be a map of how you want to move forward with your life from this point. I'll say more about that as we, uh, as we, uh, go through the day as well. There are a few important things to remember. The, the most important is that there are no rules. You can't make a mistake doing this. Just come from your heart. And in fact, that's, that's the other rule. Just be as natural and authentic and raw and playful and childlike as you can be from your heart center and um, and allow the process without judgment or expectation that's where we uh, that's where we tend to get in our own way so i want this to be 
it, it's going to be a powerful experience for you. It can be. And a spiritual experience for you. But it can also be a lot of fun. So just let that happen. Um, so as you, as you notice uh, your heart space and, and that, that raw loving space within you, um, what we want to do in the process of, of this experience is, um, is to express that on the, uh, on the paper. And so to begin, we'll take a black marker. I asked you to get these thin ones, um, but I'm going to use a thicker one just so you can see the uh, mark easier on the uh, easier on the paper. So in the center of your paper, I just want you to make a circle. It's going to be a little bumpy because of the folds and um, let that be. Let that be okay. Like I said, there are no mistakes. Um, it just, it is what it is. You know, kids don't worry about stuff like that. They draw circles in any, any kind of configuration. That's fine. So all this is really is a container. It's, um, it's a space from which we're beginning and which will sort of hold the whole process as it unfolds and expands. And in this container, I just want you to write your name. There we are. First step is done. This is who I am. I am George, right here. <laughs> you know, it's funny, when people point to themselves, um, studies have been done that, for this for a long, long time. When you ask a group of people to point to themselves, once in a great while, you'll see somebody point to their head or just make a general pointing, but most people point to their heart. And this is where we know we dwell at the center. So in your heart space, feel the center of the paper. You know, even even touch it. Make that make that connection. Because as we do this sacred experience, it's um, it matters that you make a connection. I mean, if you don't, you don't. That's okay. Like I say, there's no rules. But the more you can make a connection here to here, the more powerful this experience will be for you. Okay. So I'll be reminding you that, um, that between between each thing that we draw, you may want to pause to take some time with it and to complete that segment. I'm not going to complete the whole process as we go because that would take, for me, that would take longer. I like to really sit with it and, and be with each step of the process fully. So, um, so I'm going to do just pieces of it. And you can pause the video and complete it, or you can stay with me, quote unquote, live, <laughs> um, and complete it later at your own pace. We'll see what I mean. So as you be with the circle and breathe with it, this is you, this represents you, um, how how does it show up? How do you show up? Um, if it is kind of ragged like mine, 
um, that's kind of perfect for me right now because I'm feeling just a little ragged. You know, I'm feeling like I want this to be just right for you. And I want this to be um, just right for Asylum Hill. You know, I want, I, I, I love when we have the opportunity to do this um, Creative Arts Day. And, um, and so it matters to me. And so I put a little bit of pressure on myself, even though I'm telling you not to. I'm human. We're all human. So just right around the edges, I'm feeling just a little bit ragged. So this is absolutely perfect. This describes me as I am today. And as I see it and notice it, I can say, ah, oh, okay, this is this is where I am. This is who I am. This is I can accept this. I don't need to be other than who I am in this very moment. Um, so the next step is to take the green marker. Okay. And what you're going to do with the green marker is make some leaves. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now these might be leaves of aliveness. The aliveness that's coming from you, that's living within you, or they may be petals of the flower that you are, <laughs> or they may be arches, it doesn't matter what you call them, okay? But the purpose of these is to, closest to you, what are the loves in your life? Who are the people? that you feel closest to, your loved ones, your relationships. So I'm going to put my wife in here first. And I encourage you just to write their names. But what I'm going to do is write the actual relationships. I'm going to, uh, because uh, what what my purpose is here is to help inspire you to um, to think broadly and and so on. So I'm not going to limit it to specific names, except in the case of my wife. I'm going to use relationships, but I encourage you to think of the individual people and write their names in the leaves. So I might think of. Um, the, I've got a men's group that I'm very close to. So I'll put them in collectively. And I have a group that I meet with every morning, five days a week. We've been doing it throughout the pandemic. We started in early March, and we call ourselves the Better Together Group, B2G. So I could list all of them individually, and you can. You can put in as many petals, as many leaves as you choose um, now or later. You can, like I said, you can always pause the video and really complete this, make it very, very full. Um, certainly my siblings, I want to put my siblings in here. And even though my parents have passed, I want them to be in my uh, flower of relationships. Um, you know, I'm going to put you in there because right now I feel, even though we're separated by time and space, and obviously I've recorded this before you're watching it, um, I feel a kinship with Asylum Hill 
and um, and with the experience that I've had in the past uh, doing this retreat day. So I'm going to put in Asylum Hill Congregation and Church Creative Retreat. And um, <laughs> I uh, had dinner with a friend the other night kind of breaking the rules, but we, we socially distance and everything. And so I'm going to let her be the representative of my friends. Now, I also want to put in colleagues and I want to put in um, my clients. I, I love my clients. I love working with the people that I work with. Um, and, uh, but I think what I'm just going to do is for the final petal, the final leaf, um, I'm just going to put in for now, um, people I love. So I'm just going to say loved ones. Um, Again, you can't do this wrong. Whether you put in groups, individuals, you know, put in your kids, put in aunts, uncles, put in anyone you want, anyone who you feel um, touched by in your life. So, as I say, you can add more petals to this. Um, whatever whatever feels right to you and if you don't feel complete with this right now again you can pause the video and complete it or just stay with me and complete it later okay take a deep breath it's always good to pause between each layer that we dig into in our heart space. Really take in who am I? Who are the people that are closest to me? How do I live those relationships? What do they mean to me? And by the way, this can be um, a stepping off place, a, a prompt, if you will, for journaling at another time. You can take each element that we do in the mandala and journal about it. Um, that, that can be a very important piece of the healing process because with the journal we can go even deeper and deeper. And then we've got the art as inspiration and then the uh, journal as uh, flushing, you know, filling that, that inspiration out. Um, and we can also go the other way. You can take what's in your journal and turn it into a mandala to bring it closer and more into focus and more succinct and more in the space of your heart space. So the next color we'll use is blue. By the way, <laughs> there are no rules. You don't have to use the colors I'm using. In fact, you can do the whole thing in black. I've got a sample right here of one that I did entirely in black with just outlines. Um, you can use the colors in different orders. I just happened to pick these colors in this order actually pretty randomly. Uh, the green was the only one I thought about because I thought about leaves and flower petals. <clears throat> So, connecting the tips of each of these, make another circle. And if you miss one, that's fine. Don't worry about it. No mistakes. And if it's not quite a circle, don't worry about it. No mistakes. I missed this one down here, and I, that was kind of funky and... Who cares? That's not the point. 
The purpose of this herbal is now all of these relationships are not only connected to me, but they are now connected to each other. I'm creating my world here. I'm creating a map of my world. I'm creating um, a, um, a visual image of my life in both in focus and also in a much broader <clears throat> perspective. So all these relationships are connected to me and connected to each other. And if you want to be really, really particular and you miss the connection, just make the connection. Okay? It, it doesn't matter. I know the intention of what I did. You know the intention of what you did. And really, intention is where everything comes from. You know, we have we have the seed idea, and and we intend to express that. And how we express that in a raw way is true for us. And it may not look like anybody else's raw expression, um, but it's ours, and it matters. Periodically, you see my eyes go down and my hand go to the thing. I lose the video on the uh, on the uh, screen in front of me, and it makes it very difficult for me to focus when I see the black screen with the um, I've got these color colored patterns that go all over it. And that's very distracting for me. So, um, like I said, I want to bring you into the experience of my studio and my experience and everything that's going on. So when something like that happens, I'm going to tell you um, so that you don't wonder, you know, where, where are his eyes going? You know, so that you can be with my experience and I can be with yours. We're here, connected. Okay. Now, Actually, before I move on to that, I want to say something else about, you notice how you've got now spaces in between these? So there's a couple of things that you can do with those spaces. Um, obviously, you can draw more petals, more um, leaves, like I said before, or you can draw, um, let's say, little circles of people who matter in my life. You know, you can put names of people who matter in your life, but they're not this level. They're not direct, uh, close relationships. They're people who influence you and who matter and who you care about, but they're not in that um, circle where they're really an integral part of your heart. So you can do that with the spaces, or you can just make designs in the spaces. Oops, finish that off on this one here. Um, do whatever you like in the spaces. Um, what you will find by the time we finish is the fuller the mandala looks, the richer it's going to feel. So when you have a big space like this, I do encourage you now or later to go ahead and fill it. Uh, again, what I do when I'm doing this on my own is either other people in my life or I'll do designs of any kind. I just happen to do that, but you can do anything. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is there are two ways to do this. It may be easier for you to, we're going to make semicircles, okay? It may be easier for you to go from point to point to make a semicircle. I'm going to go from midpoint to midpoint. Again, you can't do this wrong. So even if you're way off, don't worry about it. 
it's going to look okay in the end. It's going to look beautiful in the end because it's going to be you. And, um, and so it doesn't matter how you do it. <clears throat> I just like to, um, to go from midpoint to midpoint simply because, um, I don't know. It's it's an it's then it's an aesthetic for me that um, that I can't quite describe. But again, if you go from point to point, that can be a little easier. And quite frankly, I've I've done both. I've seen both, um, and both are wonderful. So it doesn't matter what you do, but do it all the way around the circle. I just, I did this and I did this and without picking up the pen, I did the next one. I actually want to encourage you to pick up the pen between each one because you want each one to be, <laughs> look at that, to be distinct. You want it to have its own life. So pick up the marker between each one. And once again, you can't do this wrong if it's squiggly, if it's got a dark point, if it's anything but a semicircle. Um, it's absolutely fine. And if you go different directions, that's fine too. The, um, the point is that you do the next layer of your mandala. In this layer, write the things in your life that you have done or produced or experienced that you feel really proud of. What are your successes? What are your um, proud moments, your joys? What are the things in your life that you are really grateful you invested your time and energy and presence into. And as a few examples, um, uh, okay, I'll start with the obvious. Having done uh, these uh, creative retreats for Asylum Hill before, and, and the feedback that I've gotten and that the church has gotten and the way people have been helped, that is definitely a moment that I'm very proud of. So I'll just start with that. Actually, let me put in creative, I think it's arts retreat. I think I have this wrong, but you can't make a mistake in this process. <clears throat> so the creative tr retreat is definitely something that, um, that I feel proud of, I feel delighted about, I feel uh, joyful every time I think of it, which is why when I was asked to do it again uh, this time, I mean, it was a no-brainer. Uh, the only question was, how do we do it with Zoom instead of live? That's, that was the only question, is how, not, not whether to. So um, another one for me is years ago, I did a uh, an interactive, um, arts installation that um, that was really important for me. Uh, it was a real breakthrough for me. And it was called Rites of Passage. And it was sort of an inter interactive walk through the life cycle. So um, I'm going to put Rites of Passage. Uh, it got a lot of press. It, it served a lot of people. And, um, and it was a great gift for me to be able to do that. A uh, great learning for me and a, a gift I could give to others. Um, my first book just came out. I'm very proud of that. So I'm going to put my book in there. And um, in my business, Soul Deep Living. I'll just abbreviate it. Um, so 
you know the process now. I've, we've done enough of this that you know the process. You know you can complete it. Um, you can pause the video and complete it on your own. So I'm just going to do some of um, some of each layer rather than completely fill it in. I know time is time matters here. So um, so you can pause the video and complete this now, or stay with me and complete it later. The next layer is once again another semicircle. And now it's between each of these. Now I'm not having them touch, but you can. You can go from center to center, and the semicircle will just be bigger, that's all. Can't do this wrong. There are no mistakes. Everything is just right when it comes from the heart. Okay. In this circle, reflect on your dreams. What do you want for your life? What do you want? It may be what you want for your family. It may be what you want for your retirement. It may be what you want for, um, if you have a business, it may be what you want for your business. It may simply be what you want for your heart. But write your dreams in, uh, in these petals. So I want a studio where I don't have to be so cramped. And um, have to worry about the lighting and have to worry about the positioning of everything. I want, I want space to work in. Um, I... Um, I want to be able to do more retreats. That's, that's my favorite way of working with people. Um, I'll let you in on a secret. One of my secret fantasies is that I have always wanted to have one of my paintings in uh, a movie or a TV show. So, art in, I'll just say TV, but that represents movies as well. So again, fill it out, fill out the petals now by pausing the uh, video, or you can stay with me and fill it out later. The next step, now we're going to get fancy, because I know you can. So we're going to make like the Colt Onion Dome. I call these rose petals. And so make the rose petals all the way around. And in the rose petals, what are your strengths? What are your values? You know, we started off with who we are in our heart. How do we live that? How do you live that? For me, some of mine are creativity. Creativity is both a strength for me and it's a value for me. Courage is a value. I'm going to do the hard things, the things that I'm a little afraid of doing. Um, another one certainly is faith and service. So what are yours? 
what are the driving forces within you, your values, your strengths, your purpose. And then the next step, so if you're ready to move on, then stay with me. Otherwise, pause the video and you can um, finish out the rose petals. Then the next step is outline the entire mandala. Just about a half inch or so. It can be more, it can be less. Just about a half inch or so outside of everything, all the rose petals, the the dream petals. And if you go off the page, that's fine. That's not a problem. And inside the space there, what you're going to write is, it can be a prayer, it can be an intention, but it's your reflection on your connection to your source. You have yourself, your close relationships, your more distant relationships, your um, uh, successes and, and proud moments, your dreams, your uh, strengths, and now how do you connect to your source, to your God, to your higher power? And so what prayer do you want to say in this space that will complete this whole process for you so that you feel connected to self, to others, to life, to source. So I'm gonna keep mine very simple because of time. And so I will simply say, God, Thank you I love you you can use as much of that space as you want to and if you have more to say you can even write outside of it following the same contour it looks stunning when you do that after the video is over what I invite you to do is take some time with this. And if you have any notes that you want to take, you can write it right on, you can write them right on the paper, or you can simply decorate the space. In whatever way makes sense to you. Whatever way feels right. So that the entire space can be filled with beauty. Um, when we decorate the whole space, what we're doing is honoring and celebrating the mandala of who you are. And you get to uh, say, I am my mandala. And everything that I've put on here is a part of me. What some people have done after learning this experience, and I've done myself, is add other petals before, you know, do it smaller and add other petals because there's other layers to us. And we may want to express some of those other layers. That's fine. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll write those in the space around it. Um, this is also a wonderful way to uh, parse out some of the details of something that you're trying to figure out in your life. You know, here I am at the center. What is it I'm trying to achieve? Um, what are some of the steps that I need to take to, um, to achieve those things? Uh, how do I take those steps? How do I prioritize them? 
what steps do I have to do to take the steps, who can help, and so on. So this same process can be used um, not just in terms of how we used it today, but to creatively figure out what's the next thing that I'm going to do with my life and how am I going to do it? What are the processes and steps that I need to um, that I need to do it? It becomes a very beautiful mind map in that way. Um, I think that's about it. There's not much more to do today except to honor what we've done today by dedicating the merit of our self-expression, yours and mine, bringing what was in our heart space out visually onto paper, to dedicate the merit of that to all beings so that who we are can touch others. And as they are touched, they touch other people. And as they are touched, they touch other people so that it ripples out to the whole world, who we are in our heart space. When we express that in a creative way, it ripples out to serve other people. And the healing just keeps going and going and going. So thank you for spending this time for me spending this time with me. Maybe you spent it for me too, I don't know. But <laughs> spending this time with me, I'm very grateful to have been able to offer this to you. And um, I wish you well and, and joy and well-being and lots of love. And have a great retreat. Thank you for being here. Blessings. So, go out the candle. Thank you.